Hello, my name is Joe Beecham. I lead the Advanced Sequencing Technology Development Laboratories here in Foster City. And uh, I'd like to describe to you some of the recent advances in the Tech 100 series uh, genetic analyzers. This technology has been called uh, wildfire technology, and uh, you'll understand exactly where the wildfire comes before we uh, get to the end of this presentation. So again, uh, to introduce the 5500 series genetic analyzers, um, we have all the, we maintain all the features that currently exist in the 5500, the pay for lane sequencing, uh, the ultra high accuracy, the ability to do exomes, RNA, structural variation work. What we are adding to the 5500W series of uh, genetic analyzers is that we've developed the technology where the entire um, genomic library to sequencing step occurs in C2 directly in the flow cell of the 5500. Um, so this is a radical simplification of the overall flow, workflow and um, simultaneous with uh, simplifying the workflow, we also gain an increase in, in throughput. And I'll describe exactly how these technology developments were developed and uh, how they apply uh, to your particular sequencing project. So on this slide, you can see what our emphasis was in the technology development laboratories was to simplify the overall workflow upstream of the sequencing. So your genomic sample enters the flow workflow exactly as before. Similarly, we generate adapters on the ends of the genomic DNA as it comes in to generate um, a nucleic acid library that we can sequence. Now, however, instead of the library construction going through a whole series of amplification steps and then placed onto beads and then the beads get deposited and then you sequence, we're actually bypassing those two middle steps completely. So your genomic DNA uh, library constructs are added directly to a, the flow cell of the 5500 and the flow cell is generated in a new way that I will describe. Genomic DNA goes directly into the flow cell um, and then in C2, in the flow cell, your genomic DNA is amplified in a single isothermal step that requires less than two hours total time, less than 30 minutes of hands-on time, and then you go directly into sequencing. Um, what you notice there is the genomic DNA amplified directly in the flow cell. There's no sequencing beads involved. Uh, the sequencing colonies are gen generated in C2 in the flow cell, um, and then you're ready to begin sequencing. The overall process uh, is schematically described here. Um, what we start with is when you get your 5500W flow cells in the future that will be associated with, um, um, with the 5500W, inside the flow cell, on the surface of the flow cell, is, is um, deposited um, in very high density a universal sequencing primer that's set up so that it can grab the ends of your genomic DNA as you uh, adapt them. As you put your library adapters onto the genomic DNA, there'll be a sticky end on your genomic DNA that are, um, that are appended to the ends of the DNA. And that is set up to be a hybridization partner for the flow cell of the 5500. So your genomic DNA is adapted and then you literally 30 microliters of your uh, genomic DNA will go right into a flow cell lane. Um, the surface of the flow cell will pull the genomic DNA down onto the surface, and then we'll be adding a series of enzyme mixtures and nucleotide mixtures to do all the amplification in C2. So what you see here is that um, your genomic DNA comes in and lands. We'll do one simple extension to just extend off the surface primer. Um, then the entire flow cell uh, is shifted to approximately 60 degrees, and then that's, that's, you're completely done with the amplification at that, at that stage. Everything else happens automatically. So key to this process is the way we've set up um, the adapter ends to interact with the surface uh, primer is that at 60 degrees, um, the adapter ends actually breathe. And as they breathe, you can see here schematically, the ends of the DNA, are le they will walk over to an adjacent primer. All the polymerases and the nucleotides are in there, so as soon as they walk, 
adjacent one, there'll be an extension off an adjacent surface primer, and you generate a copy of the input uh, genomic DNA. Now this just ca happens continuously in a single step, and you continue to get this two to four to eight to 16 amplification, um, and that is the, the essence of how um, this new wildfire chemistry works. Now one of the key aspects of, of the way the wildfire chemistry works, and actually why we call it pro uh, Project Wildfire, is that you can envision the genomic DNA is actually the spark uh, and you're going to be creating a fire here, and the fire is the amplification of the genomic DNA. The wood that you're going to burn is actually the surface primer. So when the genomic DNA lands, there will be an adjac adjacent DNA, uh, genomic DNA fragment that will land, say, somewhere from 300 nanometers away to maybe 1.5 microns away. And both of, both of these sparks will be getting amplified simultaneously. Now the beauty of this amplification process and the way it's been set up is that each of the individual genomic DNA fragments, as they amplify, they consume the surface primer wood on the surface of the 5500W flow cells. So as they amplify and they grow and meet each other, they put each other out. So they are self-contained. And in the end, after the short 30-minute period, you actually generate a continuous sequencing surface. So on this slide, you're, we're literally looking at what I call the last base sequenced image of a 5500W flow cell that has been amplified, the genomic DNA has been amplified in C2 in the flow cell forming the sequencing colonies. And this is exactly what they look like. Um, each color represents the last base sequence, so A, T, C, and G each represent a different color. And you can see up in the bl uh, blow up in this image where I'm pointing to one individual sequencing colony. And you can see how dense these sequencing colonies grow with the five micron uh, bar there. So these, uh, the average size of these sequencing colonies is about a half a micron to about one micron. Um, and as they grow, when they reach the near adjacent surface, they put themselves out in a self-contained way. And again, you get this ultra high density. So we're looking at over uh, half a million colonies uh, per panel. Um, and that's roughly uh, double uh, the current uh, bead sequencing density. One of the things we recognized as we were developing this t sequencing technology by the direct in situ um, amplification of genomic DNA to generate um, the flow, uh, flow chip colonies is that the overall efficiency of the ligate, uh, ligation reactions themselves were increased and the time required per cycle was decreasing. So what that, allowed, uh, what that allows us to do is run the 5500W in faster sequencing modes. And this gives you one example of a fast 100 base pair sequencing mode of the 5500W. Um, and what you can see is that the overall read length has been pushed out from about 50 to 60 bases. Now that when we run the 5500W in a fast sequencing mode, 25% uh, of our bases come out between 70 base pairs and 100 base pair um, in length. So this is just beginning, and we envision pushing uh, the mean of this distribution up as close as we can towards 100 base pair fast reads on the 5500W. And again, this just has to do with the improved ligation chemistry on sequencing colonies versus sequencing beads. Now another aspect of the 5500W that we're exploring in the technology roadmap is how to, um, how to improve uh, our reverse read capability on this system. And I'm going to give you just one example. We actually have a couple of uh, methodologies we're using um, uh, associated with these sequencing colonies uh, to uh, improve our reverse read process. Um, and I'm just showing you one of them. Um, but a key aspect is that with sequencing colonies, we will definitely be improving uh, the performance of the, of the reverse reads and generating um, a much more facile um, method to develop paired end reads with the 5500W. So in this particular case, you can see that we grow, uh, we can grow these sequencing colonies just as I described. But we also have a process where on chip, we can actually essentially turn the sequencing trees, if you will, on their head um, and then sort of cut them off at the trunk so that the entire uh, sequencing uh, material that we 
our sequencing in the forward direction gets turned backwards, and then we can then accomplish a paired end read still using all our, our forward probes and our forward chemistry. In this manner, we generate directly paired end reads um, in a manner that we believe will improve the overall uh, paired end process. So one of the ways we test that is that we went ahead and sequenced the library in a standard a classic forward and reverse probe manner and generated the length distribution that you see there um, in the lower middle part of your screen. And then we actually did this process where we flipped the colonies, essentially turned them on their head on chip, and then sequenced exactly the same library. And you can see that we recover the same paired end distribution uh, using this strand flip technology as we did with the classic um, uh, reverse uh, forward and reverse probes. So we're excited about this technology. It's still a project under development. Now one of the most uh, important things as we're developing these new chemistries for the 5500W is we wanted to maintain uh, exactly that same high accuracy. So when you actually look and we measure many uh, different types of uh, accuracy statistics on the wildfire uh, colonies, and I'll just show you one, one of our most sensitive statistics are our zero uh, base mismatch percentage. And you can see here that the 5500W sequencing colonies maintain Roughly 85% of our reads occur with zero mismatches, and this is essentially identical to the very uh, for to a very high quality uh, 5500 one micron bead based sequencing run. So, and we examined, like I said, many statistics on this, and in all aspects of the accuracy of the process, uh, sequencing on these wildfire uh, colonies can be maintained at the same high accuracy that you're used to on the one micron beads. Now, one of the things we did as we were developing this wildfire chemistry, we wanted to know we maintain the accuracy. We also wanted to solve real world problems with, uh, with uh, this new chemistry. And one of the most demanding problems that, uh, um, that we wanted to put the wildfire chemistry essentially to a test on um, was on exome based sequencing, where we're actually looking at quantitating rare de novo mutations. So this is a collaborative project with uh, yours development at Nijmegen. And um, what we do here um, is to take the exomes from a father, a mother, and a child. And the child is a patient in this particular case. And the child has a single de novo mutant mutation uh, that we want to quantitate. Uh, so we will do um, exome sequencing, father, mother, child, then do a comparison and using completely wildfire technology, and then we'll be looking to sort of pull the needle out of the haystack and try to find the single de novo mutant in the child's exome. And that's shown on the next slide. Um, so what you can see here is that we have um, taken the exomes, father, mother, child, and amplified them directly in C2 in the, in the wildfire flow chip. Um, generating sequencing colonies that ident look identical to what you've seen in this presentation. And then we've sequenced them. And uh, what we found is that indeed, uh, the single de novo mutation in the child was recoverable. Um, and you can see here that the reference allele, actually both alleles were G in both the mother and the father. And the sequence, all the sequence reads from the mother and father show only the G. Uh, and then in the child at the exact same uh, chromosome location of the DNA, um, we see that with the child, eight occurrences of an alternate uh, SNP, and that's a C instead of a G. So this is, and this is exactly what we expect for a heterozygous, non-synonymous de novo mutation. Um, the uh, G to C transition that we see actually happens in a single codon. The CCA goes to a CGA, so that changes a proline to an arginine in the child, which is the origin of the disease in this particular patient. And both the mother and the father um, have nothing but the, the reference real allele G. So this was uh, a strong indication to us that this technology works, maintains high accuracy, and then in real world applications, um, it will be able to answer very difficult uh, uh, sequencing problems where you need high accuracy uh, to resolve things such as uh, rare 
non-synonymous heterozygous de novo mutations. So to put all these pieces back together again, the 5500W series genetic anal uh, analysis system roadmap, um, we generate this much simpler template pro, uh, prep workflow, uh, less than two hours, less than 30 minutes of hands-on time. Um, and this generates the ability to sequence at much higher densities. Densities are increased two to five times for higher throughput, and that overall um, uh, large reduction, you can hear 50% reduction um, in the template prep cost because um, that entire uh, process of the, that entire workflow is no longer required uh, to accomplish the sequencing. So this is the very final slide here. Again, the essence of the 5500W will be this template walking process, the simplification of the workflow. At the same time, you simplified the workflow, you get this increased in colony density, um, and at the same time, maintaining uh, the paper lane uh, sequencing um, uh, ability of the 5500. So simpler workflow, improved throughput, and the best per sample cost that's linked to the paper lane sequencing technology. The overall timeline associated with this technology, um, I just gave a talk on this uh, October 12th in Montreal at the ASHG meeting. Um, and we'll have the next update will be at, uh, at Marco Island at the AGBT meeting coming up. Thank you very much.